What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be diving back into deck building and we'll be focusing on making a mid-range deck here in Arena. Uh, mid-range is definitely a very interesting archetype in the sense that the idea here is that as much as we are a little bit on the aggro side, we also have aspects in our deck that help kind of control the game, as well as there sometimes are strategies within the deck itself outside of just attacking your opponent's face to kind of keep that control of the battlefield in your favor. Uh, it is definitely one of those decks that there is a wide swath of various mid-range decks you could play. Um, there are options that you can play in monocolor decks, two-color decks, three-color decks, five-color decks. It really depends. And typically here is a mid-range deck kind of sets itself up around turns three through five. It's kind of where it hits a nice sweet spot of where whatever the deck strategy is, what they're trying to do is that's kind of where they hit that sweet spot. Um, you know, there are various decks that currently exist in the meta that, you know, are very mid-rangey, like Esper, uh, five color humans. Um, there's 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 quite a few. I would say Grixis is another one. I could probably go on and on and on. But in today's video, we're gonna we're gonna keep it simple yet again. We're gonna do another budget friendly like mid range style deck. I did actually kind of do one the other day here on the channel in one of my you know five budget deck video. Uh, videos that happen to be posted here on the channel, and I did like an Orzov mid range deck. Um, you know, the one thing I would say mono having black in a mid-range deck is definitely very favorable especially when you're limited on budget just because it does play some of the best removal in the format um so with that being said let's just dive into the deck builder and kind of go through our ideas for what we're thinking for mid-range so diving into the deck builder we just got to select the format real quick let's start with standard just because standard's the easiest out of i think all the formats to really get into because it does have the smaller card pool um, and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of figure out, you know, are we going to play one color? Are we going to play multiple colors? And then we'll have to kind of calculate how does that affect when it comes to overall making the deck. When you start splashing in additional colors, the reason why typically those decks are a little bit on the premium is because you have to add in lands that kind of help fix your mana um, because playing straight up uh, basic lands won't do enough because sometimes you'll need like an extra land of one particular color in the color scheme that you are playing um i do think in today's video i am going to get a little little crazy i am going to probably go three colors because i do think um that's probably a nice sweet spot when it comes to playing mid-range so that's definitely probably a good area where to start um and like i said before in the beginning of the video i i think black is a good place to start when it comes to mid-range just because it has good removal um, let me just do something real quick just to make it a little bit easier because we want to keep this on the budget side. We're going to just filter just the commons and uncommons. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start adding in some of that removal. Uh, one of the key spells that are currently really good in the standard meta is going to be cut down. This is a great removal spell in the sense that it's only a one mana and it destroys target creature with power and toughness five or less. So the total power and toughness combined, it can destroy for only one mana instant speed. Makes it really, really good and a very, very premium card to play and especially best of one meta. Um, another card that's actually really good in the two drop slot for removal, which we'll grab, is going to be Infernal Grasp. Um, I probably passed it. Um, sorry, you can yell at me in the comments below. Um, so Infernal Grasp is sitting somewhere around here. We're in the one slot. Where is the two slot for uh, removal? It is an uncommon, and there it is. I actually was already on that page. We'll probably play three copies of Infernal Grass, have a pretty solid um, basis for some removal. And this is this is the next thing, right? You know, we are trying to be kind of controlly. I don't think having six removal spells is gonna be enough. We probably need some other types of removal spells that currently exist in the format, as well as ways to maybe reoccur some things from the deck. Um, you know, the idea here is as much as I made, uh, you know, the Orzov deck, I kind of want to add in another color. Maybe we add in, maybe we go Orzov, but we also add in green. I, that creates some interesting synergies. It does make it a little bit more complex, especially, like I said, mana wise. But I do think this is a pretty interesting place to start. Um, and what we'll do here is we're actually going to filter this just to instance and sorceries, just to kind of get our spells out of the way. And then we'll kind of look at what creatures kind of work well with those spells. Um, you know, this is kind of one of those things I kind of already have like a list in mind that I kind of want to make. I have it kind of uh, up on the screen just because to give myself a direction. Um, but you know, let's actually not start with instance of sorceries. Let's do creatures, right? Let's get the creatures out of the way. So the one creature that I am actually a big fan of is like the banalish sleeper. This is a great card because it's removal in itself. 
Um, it's for three mana, you get a three one, and then when it was kicked, which is that additional one mana that we're spending, uh, we get we make each player sacrifice a creature. We can either sacrifice itself when it comes out of the battlefield, or we can sacrifice another target. And I do like this card in like a deck like this where we're trying to be like a mid rangey kind of controlling deck. And I do think like two of them is probably good, just because we'll also have additional removal. We don't want to be too crazy on removal and then not have any targets for it. So we'll have a couple copies of this. Another great card that I think works well, um, you know, because we are trying to at least have some presence on the battlefield, but I think works well with our strategy, say something like a Luminarch Veteran. Uh, this is a great card in the fact that it's a one drop, it's a one one. Um, it has an ability called Disturb that you can actually bring it back to the graveyard. And um, outside of, you know, the other, I guess the initial ability is that whenever a creature enters the battlefield, we gain one life. And then the additional ability on the flip side for the Disturb cost, uh, not only is it now a one one flyer, is that whenever a creature leaves the battlefield, um, we get to gain a life. So I think it works well with our strategy, what we're trying to do here. Like you combine that with like, say something like the Ben Elish Sleeper, um, either you play it or remove it. It's going to give gain you one life no matter what side this is on. So I do think that's like a nice solid four drop. Like it's a good start in place for what we're trying to do in the deck. Um, another interesting card that I think is pretty decent, um, possibly something that we could like target. I uh, say something like a Phyrexian Missionary, right? So the reason why this card's good, it's a two mana, two, three. Uh, which is already pretty powerful for only being two mana. Uh, having three toughness at a card so cheap is definitely pretty solid. The upside here is it has lifelink, so if it was to deal damage or block, we're going to gain some life. And then on top of that, we can pay four mana for this card, and when we do, we get to return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand, so it allows us to maybe get back... Uh, it's another copy of this if it's in the graveyard. We get back a Luminarch Veteran. If we want to play the front side, we can get back a Middle Sleeper and recast it, doing it that way. So this is definitely another solid card that I think really you know works very well in this style of deck as well because it kind of helps us get additional value on cards um another solid card because we are more of a mid-range deck than an aggro deck i know a lot of the creatures i have in the deck are kind of on the small side but i like spirit companion um because it gives us additional card draw so we play for two mana it, we only get a one one but the idea here is that when it comes into the battlefield we get to draw a card which is definitely you know something that this color doesn't have a ton of so i do think actually playing a, like four copies of spirit companion is going to give us decent value especially at a budget style um you know like this is something like if you had had them in your uh, inventory like collection you maybe put like a, a bank buster here instead in the two drop slot instead of having you know additional spirit companions but i do think because we're budget spirit companion does the job um you know maybe not as well but good enough i think to kind of get us going another solid card that kind of exists in the in the meta that kind of is playable i think in multitudes of decks is actually inspiring overseer uh it's a three mana two one with flying this card's pretty great in the sense that not only are you getting a two one flyer for three um you get to gain a life and you get to also draw a card so kind of keeping that value going right we want to kind of get as much value out of the budget cards that we are playing and the fact that we can draw a card from this card for three mana is definitely pretty good Yet again, another good card as well to kind of get back if you're just looking for that card or missing card to kind of, you know, maybe help get things out of the way on the battlefield. So definitely a card I think um, you probably want a few copies of in the deck. We'll probably start with four. And like I said, as we kind of add in additional cards to the deck, we can always cut things down uh, to kind of make it more playable. So that's definitely pretty good. Um, you know... You, I've noticed that I've been doing a lot of white. Uh, haven't really touched any black creatures. I, you know, there are some black creatures I do think, um, you know, we could play in this deck. You know, I'm looking at the scorpion that I, I did have in my Orzhov deck. This is actually not a bad card in the sense that we can sacrifice one of our creatures, draw two cards, and lose two life. Um, but you know, that's something you know maybe for another deck. Uh, Morbid Opportunist is another great card. Like this is solid in the sense that it's a three mana one three that whenever one or more creatures would die, we get to draw a card. Um, and it's not just our creatures, it's any creature on the battlefield. So this is actually not bad. Um, it is definitely a good value card. So maybe we'll add like two copies of that. We don't want to get too expensive. I know we're already at like 50 cards and we still have to kind of like figure out where we're going to go with the deck overall. Um, another card that I, I think I want to add that I don't have here because I didn't, um, I'm filtered on creatures at the moment. I'll kind of get to afterwards. Um, but let's go into green real quick and kind of see what value cards we get out of green. Um, you know, the one thing that is kind of unique because we are splashing green is that there's not many cards that really fit this archetype in green. Um, there are cards that benefit us for having things in our graveyard, which is not that bad. I think one of them was like the Death Bonnet Sprout, but I don't think that's the style of deck we're trying to do. We're trying to do more of a sacrifice deck. So having cards that benefit from us sacrificing or maybe helping us get additional value is always very good. And, you know, green for the most part is more of an aggressive color, but I do think green does have some decent removal cards 
as well as there's some pretty decent top end cards that we can definitely put in the deck that kind of give us that additional value as well as you know having a decently large body on the battlefield which you know when you're playing budget you don't have a ton of cards uh one of them being like say something like a jewel thief this card's great it's a three mana three three vigilance trample it creates a treasure token when it comes on the battlefield so this card in itself is like a very you know strong card for being only a common so i do think having like four copies of that's pretty solid um you know another card that we could add copies of that i like that kind of works with the deck um you know kind of keep pressure out on the battlefield is say something like um where is it it's five mana Something like a Blossom Prancer, it's a five mana, four, four. It has reach, like so a block flyers. When it enters the battlefield, we have to look at the top five cards of our library. We can reveal a creature or an enchantment card among them and put it into our hand, put the rest on the bottom of our library in any random order. And then if we didn't put a card into our hand this way, we gain four life. So, you know, it's a decently top end value card in the sense that we can gain some life. Uh, maybe like two copies of it in the deck or you know, for now, just because, like I said, we're still gotta, we still gotta add some other cards here because we are starting to get close to 60. We don't really want to, you know, we could add in four copies if we want to make sure we kind of draw that top end. Um, but we may have to make some cuts just because I feel like there's maybe we have too much value and we don't have enough to do with said value. Um, but kind of going back into removal, I do think this is kind of like we're good on creatures. Maybe we need to play some removal. We'll do some instant sorceries. Um, for the most part, as I think that's kind of where we want to lean for the rest of our removal. Uh, a card that's actually pretty good, I don't think it's three color, it's two color, is like Rite of Oblivion. This is a great card that it gives us like a sacrifice outlet um, in the sense that we can, you know, for two mana, we can cast it, uh, we can uh, make Exile Target non land permanent, and then flash it back for four mana, which is great. You know, that's definitely a card to um, add into the deck to get us that additional value. Um, another good card that I do think that we don't have in the deck um, is going to be in, I believe, green, um, is Terra Sunder. This is actually a pretty unique card in the sense that it's a great spot removal spell for enchantments and artifacts for two mana, and then for four mana, we just get to exile target and all land permanent instead, so it's like another kind of like Rite of Oblivion effect. I do think this is definitely not that bad because we can cast it at instant speed on the cheap, or we can spend four mana and cast it on the more expensive side, so I do think having a couple copies of that is actually pretty good. As you know, the one thing I, you know, with playing like things like Infernal Grasp or Cutdowns is we don't have any room for uh, removal for like Planeswalkers or like other types of cards that your opponent may cast. So having like a card that can target other things is definitely very good. And I do think having like four uh, four total cards that kind of do that are definitely very good. Um, this one's a, at a cost of creature. This one's just you have to kick it in order to do anything. Um, and then, you know, the, the other thing too is we maybe we need just that little bit more Accursion. Um, you know, just because we want to be able to kind of stay in the game, you know, not lose too much uh, life points in the process of doing what we're doing. And the next card that I'm looking for is in black, and it is two mana. And that card's going to, or it's one mana, and it has a kicker or two. And that's going to be Urbug Repossession. This is another unique card in the sense that we get the return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand. We gain one life, or gain two life. If this spell is kicked, we can return another permanent card from our graveyard to our hand. And I do think this is like a card that has a lot of value for such a budget-friendly card in the sense that for three mana, we can get two things back from our graveyard, gain a little bit of life. Um, and the sick, and the fact that the second card that we can return is a is a permanent. Uh, so just in case if any of our lands somehow end up in the graveyard, we can definitely get them back. Um, and when we get into the lands and kind of fixing our mana, just because right now it just defaulted me at basics, um, we will uh, kind of like figure out which lands we want to play to help us overall with what we're trying to do. So right now we're at 64 cards, which is kind of expensive. Um, you know, it's definitely one of those things that maybe we need to make some cuts. So we'll go to this this board here just because it gives us a better overall of what we're trying to do. Um, you know, it's 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 definitely a struggle, uh, you know, with what we're trying to do here. Maybe we cut down on one Prancer here, which is kind of like an easy cut. I think we want to make sure we have 24 lands. Uh, you know, there's always a possibility with mid-range decks you want 25. Um, maybe, you know, if we think about it, we have three we have three six um we have 10 removal spells just in spells and then we also have you know two additional removal spells in vanilla sleeper is that too many uh removal spells maybe maybe that's where we cut down a couple copies um you know maybe we go down to like one copy or two copies and two copies and then we can hopefully balance it out so having eight like targeted removal spells with spell like you know that we can cast and then having the vanilla sleepers definitely pretty good um another card we could probably look to maybe trim down on um it's maybe like a luminar luminar veteran maybe having four copies is probably kind of expensive um but you know that kind of gets us to 60 and you know like with any deck is as you play you kind of get an understanding of like where the weaknesses and holes are is there 
a, a lot of value in the deck, but we don't get a lot, you know, out of that value is maybe what the deck may struggle with. And then we can make some tweaks, whether we need to cut down like uh, Jewel Thieves or Blossom, or maybe add in that one additional copy of this, you know, Inspire Overseer is like a good card, but it's not going to win us games. But I do think this is like a decent start in place to start for like the main deck. And the next thing you would want to do when you play multiple colors is actually try to figure out like the mana base. And this is actually one of those things that it does take some time to kind of understand, you know, you, if you want to get a better overall breakdown of what colors you are playing in the deck, you can simply click where it said new deck um, on it. And what this will do is, one, it gives you a breakdown of what's physically in the deck. You know, creatures, instants, sorceries, enchantments, and lands. I think I'm blocking the land part, but you get an idea of, you know, the breakdown of what, what cards are what in the deck. Uh, you get a breakdown of your overall curve. I mean, this is still a pretty low range curve, but there are spells that do cost additional. Um, so it is kind of that thing that even though it says like our average is 2.3, we are still kind of more of a mid-range deck because our cards themselves aren't going to grind, you know, win games quickly. It's more of a grind and out games. And as you see here as well, we have 19 white cards, 10 black cards, 9 of the forest. And then we have two multicolor cards, which are the Rite of Oblivions. But it all overall makes up uh, 20, you know, it makes up, uh, you know, the... I guess white is half of the deck and then green and black are kind of like splitting for like the other quarter of the deck. So what you want to do is you want probably, we probably want the most in white mana and then we probably want an even about an even split in green and black mana, maybe with a slight one additional card for green, uh, for black, just because it is, you know, 3% more. So what we need to do here is we need to find cards that are going to mana fix our deck. So what we need to do is one, we got to get off instants and sorceries or we're not going to find lands. And then from there, we're going to actually click gold. And what we need to do here is we probably need to uh, filter out just to dual colors. So what I'll do here is I'll probably keep it on multi, but I'll kind of filter to white and black. And I do think we want some white black lands uh, in the deck. So, you know, you do have your array um, right now in the meta. You can either play like Sunlight Marsh, which is just a land that counts as both a plains and a swamp. So if we ever want to experiment with like domain in the deck, we could do so with this card. You also have something like a Scoured Barrens, which is a common land that comes into play tapped. We gain one life in the process, which is also beneficial. And maybe because we're a little bit more on the control side um, slash mid rangey side of things, maybe we want some Scoured Barrens. Maybe like three copies is pretty solid. And then, like, the same thing we'll do here is we did white and black. Maybe we do not white and green. And I do think we can probably do a breakdown of maybe, like, a couple of this. We can do one of these. This is a land that um, comes into play tapped, creates green and white. And then in the late game, if we really need a card, we can draw it for four mana. So maybe we just do a one-off of that. Um, another card that we can look into to add additional copies of is, say, something like... Um, I believe it's colorless. If I do this... Nope. Oh, multicolor's on. Um... A great card that we could add in this because there isn't a land that exists that does this. Because um, I don't think there is one that does. That's Plains Island Swamp. This is Swamp Mountain Forest. This doesn't do anything to search for lands. This is Crixis. Yeah, so there isn't a land that technically from uh, Streets of New Capenna that searches for our colors, unfortunately. So the best the alternative that you can do is play an Evolve in Wilds. It's a land that we can... Essentially, it does basically what the, the courtyards, the, the lands from uh, Streets of the Capenna do, but we have to physically crack it. So we have to physically sacrifice it and then search our land for a basic land card. This is a card that is definitely very good for our deck just because this is a card that will just straight up fix our mana. Um, so that's good. And the one thing that's great about Arena is that it will all, it will, it will um, kind of trim uh, the lands down as you add them to the deck. So that's good in that sense. Um, the other thing too is maybe we need some green black lands. So let me go back into the colors. We'll do dual. And maybe we just need a couple copies of like a green black land. Like Jungle Hollow is great. Uh, it's the only option outside of like the Haunted Mire, which is another card from um, Dominar United. But I do think this is definitely a good start in place. Um, looking at this, I would still say we're probably, you know, we're still 50% um, green and i would say we probably actually trim a green down and we add a black and we do something like this for some reason even though white is our more dominant color it actually gave it actually our black is slightly more dominant than green it gave more to uh black uh, the other thing i guess the reason behind it is that we do have a double green spell and everything else in our deck is a single white or a single black so i guess that's why it shifted it that way um, I mean, but we can always fix that if we added like one additional copy of like say something like a botanical plaza and we cut down maybe on a plains um, but like I said, you know, as you play the deck and you get it more familiar with it and then you kind of understand, you know, you know, especially when it comes to lands, um, are you drawing the right colors? Uh, what can you shift around, to, you know, make better when it comes to lands? 
But I do think this is like a solid list to start out with. Um, it has a lot of value, like I said. Um, it has a lot of removal. It, you know, we don't. We're not going to stomp our opponent with like you know quick creatures. We're not going to stomp our opponent with big creatures. What we're going to do is we're just going to play a bunch of cards that are very valuable in like the mid range level from the two to th uh, two to five drop slot. And the idea here is that you know we're just going to give so much value on the battlefield that our opponent's not really going to be able to handle it because of how much value we have. And then, you know, if we want to take this deck um, and kind of upgrade it, I mean, the easiest ways to upgrade any deck, um, and I do think it's always beneficial, um, is one, upgrading the lands, right? The, the problem with a lot of your budget decks, especially when you start splashing colors, is now we have to play a lot of lands that come into the battlefield tapped, which overall slows us down, and that's one of the easiest ways. So if you are someone who has maybe, you know, some extra rare or, uh, you know, rare wild cards, if we go to this real quick and we just, instead of filtering on commons and uncommons, we filter on rares... You know, what you could do here is you could go ahead and, um, you know, buy some or craft some of your dual lands, right? Like get lands that will produce the colors. So if you are playing, you know, green, black, you get some death cap glades, you get some cave of Colioses, you get, you know, shattered sanctum. I think in, um, you know, we also have overgrown farmland. I think we're almost there. I don't think we have a white green at the moment, but once, um, once Brothers War comes out, I think we'll get a white green pain land that does the same thing as Cave of Colios, which will definitely be beneficial to this. Um, so that's definitely one area to upgrade. You know, just getting like, you know, getting like replacing these tap lands with lands that come in the battlefield untapped. I know this one technically comes, these style of lands come definitely into the battlefield tapped early in the game, but in the late game, they come in the battlefield untapped and they produce two colors for no damage to you, which is pretty awesome. Another card that you could do that is technically, um, I feel like a card that works very well in this. Uh, color scheme is probably, if I'm not mistaken, um, okay, we're not filtered. Are we filter any? Okay, we're not filtering any land type. Our, our card type, I should say. Um, where is it? Uh, is like a wedding announcement. Like wedding announcement is a great card because one, because this deck is very focused on producing a lot of value, right? We want to get tokens on the battlefield. So this card in itself, at the end of our turn, we get to create a one one white soldier creature token. If we attack with two or less uh, less than two creatures, if we attack with two or more, we get to draw a card. And then on the third time it triggers, it flips over to this plus one, plus one side, giving our whole board additional plus one, plus one, which is definitely pretty good. Um, another card, if you're looking for cards that are in this color scheme that do things, are pretty good for this style of deck. You go look at something like an Edgar here, kind of the same effect. Um, Edgar's just a straight up four, 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 four. Gives other vampires we control plus one, plus one, which is not very beneficial to us because we don't play a lot of vampires. Um, but the idea here is that if it does die, it doesn't get exiled. We get to transform it into the artifact side. And then the artifact side will produce one, one tokens that have lifelink um, and our vampires. And then when and then on the third time it triggers, we flip Edgar back over to the four, four side. So it kind of comes back, which is definitely very good. Um, it's definitely another solid card to add to the deck. If we look at... Um, turn off gold real quick um other than that you know there are other cards you can look at cards like restoration of a ganjo this is a great value card you know it helps us fix our mana searches your library for a planes card reveals it put it in our hand the shuffle on the second chapter we get to discard a card if we do we get the return target permanent card mana value two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped allowing us to get additional value like we if we got rid of like a uh you know a spirit of companion we can we can discard a land and get the land in the battlefield for free and then essentially still play a land so it's kind of like a uh, we can ramp up on the second chapter and on the third chapter we get a three four that whenever it attacks our blocks we get a one one spirit creature token which you know yet again is another solid card that kind of gives us that additional value um so it's definitely one of those things. I think, you know, you just got to find cards that give additional value in that way. Uh, another great card that kind of works what we're trying to do here is say something like, you know, like a Jadar. Like Jadar is great for the deck because it's a creature that legit just at the end of our turn, uh, if we control no creatures with Decayed, we get to create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed, which, you know, works well in tandem with like cards that we're going to sacrifice. You know, it works well with Rite of Oblivion. We get a free token. It works well with Vanilla Sleeper. Um, you know, it's, it definitely gives us that additional value. And, you know, if we have like an opportunist out, that card is now going to turn to a draw card effect in general as well. Um, so that's definitely very good there. Uh, you know, it's just, there's, there's, there's a lot of cards that work very well with this strategy and it's just kind of finding those pieces that are going to work very well. 
Um, like something even like a Teachings is not bad. You know, it's a card that also produces value. Mill three cards, create a one with color spirit creature token, which would work well in tandem with like say something like a architect. You know, our restoration of a Ganjo. Uh, the second chapter we get a plus one plus one counter on target creature with control, which could put a plus one plus one counter on the token that we created, or a creature that's already out in the battlefield. And on the third chapter we get a one one that also starts eating away our opponent's graveyard. Uh, if he eats a creature card, we get a one one color speech. Uh, exiles a creature card, you get the 1 1 spirit. If it exiles a non creature card, we get to get a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature control. So, like, something like that's actually not that bad. Um, you know, there's there, there are cards that, you know, if you look through that definitely have a lot of value. I mean, uh, if you have any of these, the legendary lands in white, green, or black, uh, playing one of, you know, them are never, you know, a bad idea just because they all have like a channel ability that does something. This one's destroys our artifact or enchantment or non-basic land the black one mills you some cards and you get back a creature or planeswalker the white one will deal three uh four damage to target creature that's blocking or attacking which is definitely pretty sweet um you know you can look at something like like a liaza if you want to do something instead of like the blossom Pr prancer you could add in like liaza in the top end it's a four or five fly and life linker that whenever an another non-token creature we control dies we get to return to our owner's hand to be the next end step of creature opponent will control die uh, exile instead so it kind of eats you know your opponent's things um, you know it's just a matter of going through your collection seeing what you own um, building up you know based off of like the base of um, what you kind of put together and then kind of making those adjustments and you know typically like I said anything that you were add into the deck you kind of try to find cards that does something similar but the card you're adding does something better so if like like example if you want to add in Liza, you probably get rid of Prancers if you want to add in uh, you know, wedding announcements, you probably look at your three drop slot. Like, do you need Jewel Thief at that time? You know, is Jewel Thief still good? Is I think Opportunist still stays pretty well. This is like a good value card until you get some other value cards. Maybe Opportunist does get cut away because the benefit is if we tack in with our wedding announcements with two or more creatures, we get to draw a card off of that. Is that an overall better ability than Opportunist? Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot to kind of take in. It's kind of like making those adjustments and kind of figuring out what works best for you. But I would say, you know, the first card I would add is like a wet announcement if you're really um, curious as to what I prefer to add into the deck, um, just because of how much value it adds um, in the sense of what it does. Uh, the other cards I would probably add would probably be, um, where, can I, where is it? I literally just had it in the in the pile, and then I kind of threw it back into the middle. Um, like a Jadar, like Jadar feels great for this deck, right? Because it creates the creatures. Um, and then green is kind of more on the tricky side. I wouldn't say there's like one particular green card that's like a must add. Um, and the, the deck wouldn't work if it didn't have the green card. Like I feel like, you know, there are a ton of cards that exist. Um, but I would say these two are probably the main two. Uh, Jadar would probably just replace maybe like, I don't know, maybe cut down on like uh, missionaries. Maybe you cut down on sleepers. You know, it's one of those areas where I probably cut down. Uh, like I said, wet announcements, you probably get rid of some opportunists. Maybe cut down on Jewel Thief. Uh, or you cut down on opportunist and you cut down on inspire and overseer and that's kind of where i would position myself and then other thing too is if you have any of the dual lands that kind of do the same thing but they're the rare version i would replace the dual lands that match the same color so if you have black green dual lands that, um, that are rare replace the jungle hollows if you have white uh green dual lands you place the blossom sands um so overall that's kind of how i approach maybe upgrading the deck if you're someone who's looking to take my list that i created here uh, in the video and kind of make it your own. Um, I will have a link for this, the deck down in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, if you have any further questions, I can do my best to kind of elaborate a little bit further. If uh, maybe depending on what your answer is, if it's something that's regarding the deck or if it's just something regarding in general, I'll do my best to answer it. If you like the video, hit that like button. Definitely helps out a lot. If you're new here, you want to post new videos like this one here on the channel, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Just want to give a special shout out to the channel members here on my YouTube channel. You can also become a channel member yourself down below the video, hitting that join button. It definitely helps out a lot. And I just appreciate you guys for your support.